a shocking figure for you. The demand for plus-size clothing is increasing with demand up by 70% in just two years. Now for office workers the battle of the bulge is particularly hard being stuck at the desk from nine to five, long business lunches and work trips make it tough to keep trim. Mm -hmm. But one business executive who stopped making excuses and lost 70 kilos, he's here with us to share the secrets and he joins us with the health expert Amelia Burton. David, you had a long struggle with your weight, You're, you clocked it at 165. Why do you think as a businessman you were more prone to putting on weight? I think there are probably a number of factors. There were the, uh, the long business lunches that you, you mentioned earlier, um, and it's not just the length of it, it's what you eat when you're at lunch. Mm. Uh, I think there's the travel schedule. You're, you're always a, on a plane away, mm. so you've got to worry about those kind of things. And then it's just making time. You know, there's always an excuse for, I've got another meeting, stuff like that. David, these pictures that we're seeing of you now, what, no, were you, what would you have weighed there? Um, I was, uh, in some of those, uh, the heaviest I got to is 165. You look older point, there too. Point one. Do you notice that? You look great yeah, now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 165.1 was my um, heaviest. Yeah. Uh, and, and you found it just kind of crept on because of... Well, I think it more sprinted, to be honest, really? at some, at some points. It, it crept off rather than crap yeah. on. Okay. And, and it's really easy to make excuses as you're going through. You just think, oh, I'll just upsize my trousers a little more. Yeah. Speaking of excuses, Amelia, what, what are the common excuses yep. that, that office workers, and we're office workers too to we a certain are. extent, make when it comes to exercise? Definitely I'm too busy is the first one and um, you know when I say when I hear people say they're too busy some of the busiest people I know are exercisers look at um, Obama for example our former Prime Minister they used to train every single day so mm. being busy you have to schedule your um, your workouts like a meeting like an appointment the second one is um, you know having a long lunch well you have to get really strategic when it comes to long lunches if you're having one once in a while that's okay but if you're having them every week you've got to set up some parameters, have red wine instead of um, at drinking beer because you drink it slower. And I travel a lot is a really, really um, common excuse, but I don't buy that excuse at all. And um, David's a really good example of someone who travels a lot but was able to get great results. David, what was the, what was the tipping point for you apart from the scales? <laughs> what, what was the tipping point to say, I've had enough, I'm going to do something yeah. here? I, I think when the scales told me, you know, one at a time, mm. um, it just it, to me it was meeting a friend of mine who lost 25 kilos doing the kind of program I'm doing was the tipping point. And when you've been in 7XL and you're looking down the barrel of 8XL as a clothing size, it was just, it was just enough time to move on. So. so how did you do it, David? Yeah. How, did, how did you shift 70 kilos? Yeah, um, it, it's an interesting story. So first of all, I had a month where I wasn't traveling, um, which was the, the point I was able to get in for four weeks and actually get started with a program called CrossFit, mm -hmm. which I do locally at Waverton. And then the skills I used at CrossFit or learned at CrossFit, I just applied when I traveled. So uh, in some hotels where they've got gyms, I was able to do workouts where the gym had the, the kind of uh, weights that you would use. But a lot of it's cardio or aerobic, so you don't need big weightlifting machines. Uh, and then I just got creative in some of the things I did. So um, some hotels in Asia where I travel a lot, they don't open their gym until 6 in the morning. And mm. uh, as Amelia said, you've got to make an appointment with yourself. Well, my appointment is at half past 5, and so I won't give it up. So half 5 to half 6 is my time. Mm -hmm. So um, hotels that didn't open their gym, I'd work out in their lobby um, and you know you're dripping in sweat, <laughs> and they're kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll open the gym. Yeah, we'll open the gym. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. please. Yeah. So really, uh, that's it. If you're travelling, yeah. it's make time for yourself, and also yeah. the food is hard to, to manage. Yeah, absolutely. So David's been so successful because he's looked at all three avenues. He's done his mindset by ditching the excuses and setting his goals. He's found a type of training that really works well for him, and that he can take and travel with him and be creative with his travel. And then he's followed a, a diet regime called the Paleo diet, which basically means if it grew in the ground or it walked on the ground, you can eat it. Everything else is off limits, so no processed food, no soft drink, no chocolate milk, all that sort of thing. But the key with David is his consistency, mm -hmm. and that's what he's been doing for the past sort of seven, eight months, is being consistent. Well, congratulations. Yeah, you congrats. look fantastic. Yeah, you do. And yeah. you've inspired me. How? Me so, too. I've got to start at the gym again tomorrow. Do it. We'll, we'll cancel that long lunch today. Now here's a hairstyling tip from Janie.